Greetings. Pretty blinding. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming. Uh, we were super excited to have you all up here. Um, so, like you said, uh, my name is Adam Christian. I work here at Sauce Labs. And uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about an open source tool that has sort of grown over the last uh, few months called FlexPilot. Um, and um, let's see here. So, hands up, how many people deal with Flex stuff at all? Flex applications. Let's see. Okay. Okay, those of you who don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's it's just like that, but not at all. <laughs> okay, well that that's useful to know. So okay. So Flex Pilot. Uh, it exists because I wanted a flex testing tool that I could integrate with different uh, web testing frameworks that had an Apache 2 license. Uh, the freedom there is really important to me when I'm, when I'm doing uh, various kinds of development. The other thing is having used Windmill and Selenium and Water, uh, I wanted something that I could run tests, you know, one command at a time in a sort of a functional test tools kind of way. Uh, I tried various other things. To answer your question before it happens, I tried two things, Flex Selenium and Flex Monkey. Um, I'm not going to say that there's anything wrong with those projects. I just find, didn't find sort of the workflow that I was looking for. And you'll see a little bit more of, of that in a minute here. Um, the other thing is I wanted the API to be really simple. Um, I, other projects are probably using the same API for some things. Flex click. It should allow you to click easily on a Flex component. Um, and the other thing, like I already said, is I wanted something really open and flexible. So what do we have as features? Uh, right now we have a lightweight bootstrapper, which will see exactly the three lines of code to make your, your app testable. Uh, next thing is I wanted to be able to move my mouse over the DOM and then flawlessly go right over on top of the flash and get the same experience. And this, the same type of thing with recording. Uh, I wanted to be able to record a user session and dump that and play that immediately back like you can with a lot of the you know, web testing frameworks. Um, we, we invented something that's sort of an XPath equivalent. You, those of you who are familiar with XPath, a uh, way to access any part of the DOM at any point in time without having any sort of specific names or IDs attached there. Uh, I know some of you are in, in a situation where you're a testing person uh, and you don't really have much influence over the development. So when you need to get to something, you need to get something. Uh, we also have another thing which is native uh, action script tests. So you can build your tests and compile them and run them uh, directly inside of Flash or Flex, um, accessing stuff that you probably wouldn't want to from the outside. Uh, those run incredibly fast and are probably better for unit testing. Um, and uh, like I said, the, the functional Flex commands. So you have a click in Selenium. I want Flex click to work. So OK, you have this app. You want to test it. What's it going to take to get there? Well, essentially, it boils down to this. Uh, we have a, you can either build it yourself or we pr provide a built version of the uh, FlexPilot Swift. Uh, and you import the bootstrapper and you tell the bootstrapper what your, the stage is of your application. And it will go ahead and load that up, add all the listeners, all of the APIs, and, and you're ready to go. Okay, I know this is tiny and I don't expect really any of you to really care all that much about this. But I'm going to briefly say uh, we have a little bit of a workflow. <laughs> if you're a Farscape person, uh, Moya would be your Flex application. <laughs> it's geeky, I know, but just stick with me. Uh, and then Pilot, driving the ship, is Flex Pilot, and that's actually where the name came from. So you have the browser, you have your embedded fl uh, Flex application, you have our hooks, and then we're using the content JavaScript in the browser as a bridge. So you can, you can build whatever you want right here. Uh, I've built a couple of things, one I'm going to show you today, uh, and it's for, uh, I want to record. Now, I want to tell content.js to give me information. Um, if you have any more specific questions than that, you can, you can come talk to me. So for the meat, okay, so here's a little demo, Selenium IDE, or Sauce IDE, 
Uh, and then a, a flex application over here. Um, there's going to be some improvement on this, but for right now it's very simple. You go to Options and you hit Explore. And if you have a new action up here, say uh, Flex, Click. Let's see, my screen got smaller on me. You can iterate around your Flex application and uh, when you find the item you want, one click turns off the Explorer, and one click plays the action back. Uh, we also have a similarly built-in recorder. So if I wanted to do testing, Selenium. And so since I didn't turn the recorder off, it's recording itself <laughs> recording. That is awesome. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a bug, but, but it is kind of awesome. It, it's specifically designed for load testing. <laughs> So now I'm playing through that mass of actions that I just recorded. Um, and I think Moya is going to explode. OK. She did. Let's <laughs> probably did, yeah. Um, OK, uh, so I, I have another slide that I'm not even going to go back into that app for. Uh, so OK. So I'm here. I want this test. Uh, and I want to run it as a normal Selenium test from Python. I go here, I type in something, I hit save. You come up with something a little bit uglier like this. Um, I've been sort of brainstorming on what the API uh, should be. I don't necessarily like um, the default sort of Selenium uh, API, but um, I can't come up with anything really much better. So I've left it as JSON. And in your language, uh, if you're writing your test in a language, you should be able to de deal with JSON uh, at this point. If you can't, you're, you're sort of in an interesting situation. So um, the, the objects, the, what you pass around are just objects uh, with parameters on them. And you pass them to Selenium as if you would any, any other action. OK, where am I? I actually have more to this demo. Uh, so I have the Selenium server running over here. And I have my test file here, uh, right? And so, and this should do exactly what I want it to do, hopefully. Let's make this taller so you guys can see something happening. OK, so the test is running in the background. Just saw a drag drop and a couple other things happen. Anyways, the general gist is that it runs like a Selenium test uh, against the RC. And all of you probably have some kind of infrastructure uh, that, that you want to interop with that. And that should be just the same way as anything else. OK, so it's still sort of in a this works as in, and, and has been used with lots of different applications. but. There's always more to do. Uh, so right now, there's built in for your standard input boxes and buttons and, and various things like that. But the next thing we want to do is add some more stuff like uh, uh, integrated, very simple ways to manipulate data grids. Uh, that's an example. Uh, and, and there's considerably more stuff uh, beyond that that can be added. Uh, we have a Google Summer of Code project, uh, which we're going to have somebody working on this. And uh, obviously, the UIs and the integration with other things like Selenium ID can be improved. And I'll be, I'll be continually working on that. And, uh, and then there's one last piece which people don't necessarily like. And that is that you have to put three new lines of code into your app. And uh, there, there are various different schools of thought on the best way to do this. And even Adobe has APIs for um, not having to add anything into your app. And it's, as I see better and easier things to do, 
I'll be adding those and upgrading them to make this process simpler and simpler as, as the technology progresses. Uh, so it's all on GitHub, uh, the project and the Selenium extension. Uh, this is all also built natively into uh, the Windmill IDE. And you guys can go look at it. There's a wiki, there's built files, there's all kinds of downloads and, and stuff to get you started. Um, and that's pretty much all I got. <laughs>